Steve, what's your role here at Hella? Uh, so I'm employed as engineering manager. I uh, look after a team here that take uh, a machine like this and employ it for various different parts in industry. So that could be an aerospace part, it could be an automotive part, or just a general engineered part. And what makes Hella the best at what you do, do you think, in your opinion? I think Hella is synonymous with machines that go into environments where they're tested. So environments where you've got round the clock running, 24-7, lights out, unmanned production. All these things where a premium machine tool comes into its own. Um, when, you, when you get a job, how, how does it work from a customer pers perspective? What challenges and problems do you solve for a customer? How does the process work? So normally we get an inquiry from a customer and it could be to produce a certain widget and he wants 40,000 rows a year. Uh, we would take the engineering drawings, we would look at the quality requirements, so we do a tolerance evaluation on that part. Uh, we then look at what tools we can employ. We do uh, time studies, um, which are typically accurate to within plus or minus 5%. Um, we look at fixture and we have our in-house fixture design team. Uh, so we're able to look at work holding and the best way of that work holding um, is designed. And then we um, put together a bid. So we look at the number of machines that we need to employ to do that job. And then we put that in, in, in the form of a quotation to the customer and then we develop from there really. If there's automation requirements, we can handle that as well. When you are looking at unmanned running, what things do you have to factor in and are the most crucial elements to it? Not every job suitable for unmanned running. You know, large cycle time jobs are perfect. Um, so you've got to look at the whole package of what we can offer. Uh, for example, you might want to put in there a, a system like a fast temp system or an AROA system uh, to stack work pieces. Or if it's a robot load uh, system, then we need to look at uh, best ways of manipulating fixtures for, for robot loading, etc. And what about the actual machine itself in the workings of it? Because you've got a, a spindle there that potentially is operating 95, 100% of, well, 99% of the time maybe when you take the tool changes out. How do you maintain tolerance, maintain, you know, all those factors that mean part one is the same as part 350 or 1,000? We have a lot of um, checks in place in the machine. So we have um, uh, spindle growth compensation, for example. Uh, we have um, uh, coolers chilling the, um, the machine if it's, if it's required as, as part of the tolerance that we're trying to achieve. Um, we have a lot of options that help uh, the customer in terms of, for example, balaf chips. It reduces the chance that an operator is going to make an error. Um, we do cross checks within the program to make sure that tool uh, life is monitored correctly. Uh, we have options where we can check if tools are broken or not and pull in different strategies if we need to so we can pull in sister tools. And all what those about things. the environment that the parts being machined in, the swarf, the coolants and all of those things? How do you ensure that those don't complicate or get in the way of a finished part? So the machine's equipped with a coolant uh, system with a, an overhead shower. That's a very powerful system. Most of our customers take also um, the 50 or 70 bar option on through to, through to coolant. coolant. So we've got lots, lots of options to keep the machine clear and free running. And the benefit of, of the Heller machine, especially the, the HF, it has a very large uh, chip evacuation area at the bottom of the machine bed so we're able to pull out swarf quickly that's that's crucial for high volume aluminium machining for example where you're creating a lot of lightweight swarf what about a customer that wants to do differing materials on this machine unmanned is that something that you have to adapt the machine to you might want to do titanium components stainless steels how do you mix and match that, there's always a compromise if you want to do different materials on the same machine because the machines are designed and we have a portfolio of spindles, so we can take this machine, we could put a, a spindle in there which is 30,000 RPM if you want to do to, uh, aluminium, or you could use a 6,000 RPM spindle if you're doing cast iron. So there's always a compromise, but the machine can do it. Um, a lot of people won't want to mix swarf, that's the big issue, because you've got to dispose of that later. Um, so you would tend to do it in batches and clean the machine out in between, really. And when, uh, from start to finish process, from a turnkey perspective, what is that journey entail how long does it normally take it's long <laughs> yeah i mean typically when you're talking um a single machine it could be very quick but if you're talking a, a row of six or seven machines with automation it, you could be bidding for, for a year and a half and working with your customer to make sure that what they're buying into is right for them that's the, the key thing how many times do your customers come back for another sell 
of machines after the you've been our level, successful? Our level of repeat business is quite high. So we have a lot of customers that uh, come back time and time again, which is testament to not only the product, but also the people here in the UK and how they are able to support the customer. And I think that sets us apart a little bit.